Hello, my name is Brenda and I work in the Arable Market Intelligence team at AHDB. Today I'm going to talk you through DEFRA's second official UK cereal supply and demand estimates for wheat, barley, maize and oats, which were released on the 1st of March. So the latest estimate is the third for this season, following the AHDB early balance sheet in October and DEFRA's first official forecasts back in December. Key headlines from this update are that continued domestic demand for wheat has pushed prices to import parity in many areas. This potentially leaves the market open to further volatility, considering that the surplus available is now pegged at a three-year low. For barley, we've also seen the exportable surplus cut, mainly due to lower availability. The balances of available supplies and demand were also reduced for both maize and oats. So I'll start by focusing in on wheat for a minute, which saw the main changes from previous estimates. So the wheat balance sheet has been heavily influenced this season by increased demand from bioethanol companies for industrial uses and the poultry sector for animal feed. With both of the UK's bioethanol companies operating during the course of this season, this has had a big pull on domestic wheat. And this is something that we've seen coming through in the regional feed wheat prices. The fact that this demand has, is heightened in a season where we already saw an annual cut in production of around 2 million tonnes contrasts with the last couple of seasons when rigor crops didn't have the same scale of demand from that sector. As I mentioned, the poultry sector is another driving force behind feed wheat demand this year, particularly for broiler, broiler diets. Production of both sheep and other sectors feed demand has also been stronger this season but with poultry diets comprising of around 60% of wheat, growth in this industry affects this commodity more so than other grains. In addition, an increased appetite for wheat rather than maize for distilling has contributed to the squeeze in the wheat balance sheet. With openings, operate, operating stocks required by processors from the 1st of July through to the new crop was usable, estimated at 1.6 million tonnes, plus the fact that we now know that exports for the first half of the season were almost 1.1 million. This, gives, this means that the first, from the 1st of January, only 393,000 tonnes was available for exporting until June, or to be carried forward as free stock. Overall, barley demand was unchanged on the previous estimates in December, with very slight reduction in human and industrial demand, offset by a similar increase in animal feed demand. The UK average ex-farm feed barley price is at a discount of over £20 per tonne to feed weight at the moment, so inclusions of barley in certain diets, such as for pigs and ruminant, are expected to be at relatively high levels for the rest of the season, if these price relationships remain. The outcome for the barley balance sheet is a lower surplus at 1.7 million tonnes. Considering that exports during July to December totaled 667,000 tonnes and the minimum operating stock is estimated at 760, we're actually left with just over 1 million tonnes of a surplus. And this could be used for exports during January to June or to be carried as free stock into the new season. Finishing with maize and oats, only small adjustments were made to both balance sheets. Both saw their ex exportable surpluses revised downwards. Increased usage of maize for bioethanol production, but lower demand from the animal feed sector took projected imports down slightly. And con continued very strong demand by oat millers features again this season. So as we move towards the last quarter of the season, attention turns to what the potential opening stocks positions might be for 2017-18. Clearly for wheat, continued demand from the bioethanol and port poultry sectors will have a substantial bearing on how tight the wheat balance sheet gets. Looking at the fact that new crop values are lower than old crop prices at present, there isn't that incentive anymore to carry old crop into next season. This is also something worth monitoring toward as we move towards the harvest. We'll be focusing some analysis on the old crop transition into the new crop year over the next few months. So keep up to date with this at the AHDB Markets website.